Greetings everyone, Mike here with Sci-Fi and More and welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, welcome to our Sci-Fi family. And we hope you are enjoying the channel. Ah, the Doomsday Machine. The robotic eating machine that first appeared in Season 2 of Star Trek The Original Series. Shaped like a cone laying on its side that was said to be miles long in the episode with a singular purpose destroy worlds and consume the remains through its gaping maw to continuously fuel itself. But who made this thing? And where did it come from? Questions Captain Kirk finds himself asking in a thrilling battle against a massive planet killer. So before we get into it, if you have never seen anything Star Trek, there are spoilers ahead. And if you are enjoying our videos, please be sure to drop a like and share and if you would like to support our channel further, please be sure to subscribe. It's one click for you, but it means the world to us. Now, let's get into the Doomsday Machine. The USS Enterprise receives the first ever disaster alert we hear as fans. Not red alert, not a distress call, a disaster alert. Upon investigation of the disaster alert, the Enterprise discovers that an entire solar system that has been surveyed only a few months earlier has been completely destroyed and turned into rubble, with the exception of its star. Very soon after, the Enterprise discovers that a second solar system is suffering from the same cataclysmic fate, with only the two innermost planets still intact. The Enterprise moves into the second solar system and locks into the origin of the disaster alert, the heavily damaged USS Constellation, another Constitution-class starship under the command of Commodore Matt Decker, who is the last remaining member of his crew on board the USS Constellation, being dangerously close to being dragged into the gaping maw as the Doomsday Machine continues to move through the solar system to devour the remaining two planets. The stakes are high, Kirk must think fast and take a daring risk, blowing up the constellation from within the Doomsday Machine. The tensions mount and Kirk's bold plan unfolds to ram the damaged constellation down the throat of this planet killer with the impulse engine set to overload and detonate from within. But amidst the chaos, one burning question remains. Who is the mysterious force behind the unstoppable Doomsday Machine? The nearest answer we get to that question in Star Trek canon, at least in this episode, is when Captain Kirk says, a doomsday machine that somebody used in a war uncounted years ago. They don't exist anymore, but the machine is still destroying. Surmising that the planet killer was built by a race of aliens long since gone, fighting in a war from before recorded time in a different galaxy and that the Doomsday Machine was built as a weapon of last resort, and has just been wandering through space ever since. So the episode itself does not give anything specific to grab onto in terms of a specific alien race or an origin story for the Doomsday Machine. But in Star Trek, there are always mysteries, and sometimes nothing is quite as it seems. The Doomsday Machine poses a chilling conundrum for Captain Kirk and his crew, could such a cosmic horror have simply sprung into existence on its own, wreaking havoc across the galaxy? We've seen instances of something similar to that with V'ger from 1979's Star Trek The Motion Picture. But at least with V'ger, we know that in part humanity was responsible for the creation of V'ger since the NASA Voyager 6 probe was at the heart of the V'ger cloud repurposed and redeveloped by an advanced robotic species. But what if there is a darker truth lurking behind the creation of the Doomsday Machine? There are some interesting theories suggesting that it could have been engineered for a sinister purpose. Could this planet-killing entity have been crafted with a malevolent agenda in mind? Or could the Doomsday Machine have been designed as a defense against the formidable Borg? or even trace its origins back to an ancient alien race known as the Preservers, where we learned that before the Preservers were no more, they had gone out into our galaxy, 
and seeded the worlds of the known galaxy with their own genetic material, giving rise to all the multiple humanoid species we see throughout Star Trek's cinematic history. The prospect of untangling this web of cosmic intrigue propels us into a realm of fantastic speculation and theories behind the Doomsday Machine. In fact, Memory Beta, which is Star Trek's non-canon for theories, novels, comics, fan-made movies, and overall extended universe theories, offers a more distinguished purpose for the Doomsday Machine, or Doomsday Machines, still out there, which was proposed by Captain Kirk in the original series, and who may have created them as well. Non-canon materials such as the Next Generation novel Vendetta and the Star Trek Voyager's Planet Killer comic, The Ultimate Weapon, created a storyline where it was believed that the Doomsday Machines were in fact created by the Preservers to be used against the Borg. Though it also seems that they may have not been successful with the Borg. And the Borg, who designated the Preservers Species 4672, were able to vanquish the Creator race. Other non-canon sources hold that the machines were built 50,000 years before the Federation encounters with them, and that a thousand years later a wave of the weapons led to the destruction of the first Orion Empire. And still others claim that the machines were billions of years old and came from outside the galaxy. In the Star Trek Extended Universe book, All Our Yesterdays, the Time Travel Source book, it does in fact imply that the Doomsday Machines were responsible for the destruction of the first Orion Empire, but the book only denotes them as robotic planet killers. And still another account implies that the Doomsday Machine was created by a race of giants from another galaxy at war with another alien race over three million years ago. The creators of the Doomsday Machine turned their weapon on their enemy's home world to utterly destroy it. However, upon returning home, the weapon malfunctioned and destroyed its creator's home before turning on the other planets of the solar system. After a thousand more systems had been destroyed, the Doomsday Machine's path carried it outside its native galaxy where it finally shut down, content to drift until more planetary food could be found. The beta canon theories and novelizations are fun because they flush out the giant robotic planet killer quite a lot and in some cases try to give it some purposeful meaning behind its existence. Meanwhile, back in Star Trek canon, the episode The Doomsday Machine is the sixth episode of the second season of Star Trek and it was written by Norman Spinrad and directed by Mark Daniels, premiering on October 20th, 1967. And it was nominated for a Hugo Award in the same year. Additionally, in 1991's 25th anniversary of the series, a fan survey of the top 10 episodes of the original series ranked The Doomsday Machine number four, behind only Trouble with Tribbles, The City on the Edge of Forever, and a mock time. Episode writer Norman Spinrad based the script on his novelette The Planet Eater, which unfortunately had been rejected by a number of publishers. He then revived the idea when he had a chance to pitch it to executive producer Gene Roddenberry. In his mind, Spinrad wanted actor Robert Ryan to portray the role of Commodore Decker in the episode, but due to scheduling conflicts, Robert Ryan was unavailable due to his prior commitments, so William Wyndham was cast into the role. Norman Spinrad had expressed his disappointment that the actor whom he envisioned playing Decker, Robert Ryan, was unavailable to be cast since the script that Spinrad had written was written with Ryan in mind, and Ryan was also a fan of the series and wanted to be in an episode. There have been some speculation that the episode was based on Fred Saberhagen's Berserker series, which features robotic killing machines built as a doomsday device by an Alvanish race to wipe out their rivals. 
However, author Norman Spinrad denies the influence, and according to Spinrad, he wasn't consciously aware of the Saberhagen series when he was doing the Doomsday Machine, and indicated that his novelette, The Planet Eater, was written before the Berserker series. But he does indicate that he was certainly conscious of Moby Dick, which, in fact, is what his unpublished novelette is based on. One fun fact about the Fred Saberhagen Berserker series is in some non-canonical Star Trek media, they refer to the Doomsday Machines as Berserkers. I thought that was pretty interesting. Gene said to me, uh, we're running out of money at this time in the season. Can you think of a show that we can shoot on standing sets? That is the sets for the Starship Enterprise. Uh, a long time ago, I had had a notion which never really went anywhere to write a kind of science fictional take on Herman Melville's Moby Dick with what became the Doomsday Machine, the Planet Killer, as the White Whale, and the character that became uh, Commodore Decker as Ahab. But what about the Doomsday Machine prop? What is it, and, and who created it? Now, as I was doing my research for this video, I believed that the prop used for the Doomsday Machine was created by famed production designer Hua Chang, who was known for his work on numerous science fiction television series and films, including Star Trek, creating such iconic props as the salt monster creature suit from the episode The Man Trap, the Gorn creature suit from the episode Arena, the Neanderthal creature suit from the episode The Galileo 7, and the Romulan bird of prey first seen in the episode Balance of Terror. In addition to many other props used throughout the series. But I was wrong in my assumption. It was in fact Norman Spinrad that had been tasked to sketch out an initial design for the Doomsday Machine. And so I explained this to Gene, he thought it was a good idea, and he said, go ahead and do it, and when you're doing it, uh, think of Robert Ryan as Commodore Decker, because Ryan, as many other people at that time, wanted to do with Star Trek. So I wrote um, the Doomsday Machine in that manner, it was approved, and then Gene asked me to design the Doomsday Machine itself, even though I wasn't much of an artist, because I would have a, a, a good take on it. So I spent a lot of time uh, designing the thing, drawing it as best I could, and presenting it to Gene, who said he liked it, and we had a very good relationship, and then I was invited, or at least allowed, to go on the set for the entire shoot. However, Norman Spinrad was, let's just say, underwhelmed with the model that eventually would come to be used in The Planet Killer. As he told Alan Asherman in the Star Trek interview book, he envisioned a doomsday machine bristling with all sorts of evil-looking weapons. But with each episode of the original series operating on a budget of about $185,000, budgetary constraints became a factor in the development of the Doomsday Machine being developed into what Spinrad had envisioned. The actual Doomsday Machine model we see in the episode was nothing more than an aviation windsock that you would see at any typical airfield that was taken and dipped into cement. Seems like an overly simple idea and most certainly stayed within the episode's budget. But as far as a practical effect model goes, this overly simple idea created a lasting image of a menacing robotic planet killer. However, when trying to find out if the prop model still exists today, unfortunately I was unable to find any reference indicating that the prop still existed, and I am forced to conclude that the model itself no longer exists. But I am happy to be proven wrong on this point. If you know that the model does in fact still exist, please drop a comment below. I think a number of fans would love to know a definite answer to that one. 
in looking for a location of the Doomsday Machine prop, I did, however, get led to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum when looking to see if the prop was still with us today, which houses the original studio model of the USS Enterprise used in the production of Star Trek. However, within the Smithsonian Star Trek exhibit, there are only images of the Doomsday Machine on display. And if you get a chance to visit the Smithsonian and you are interested to see the original studio model currently on display, it is located at the Boeing Milestones of Flight Hall. But not all is lost. While the prop itself appears to no longer be with us, something else of the Doomsday Machine episode has remained with us to this day, which comes in the form of an archive of original scripts and story outlines from 75 of the 79 original episodes comprising the three seasons of the original Star Trek series, including the pilot episode titled The Cage. That was up for auction at Julian's Auction House for the Stars, with an estimated value between $60,000 and $80,000, with a final bid and sale price of $70,400. Not too shabby. This lot included approximately 193 total script drafts from 73 of the episodes, 94 story outlines from 53 of the episodes, a large selection of original memos and additional material that filled five file boxes nearly complete. But what was key to this massive collection is one of two known outlines written by none other than William Shatner an outline for a possible Star Trek episode, as well as a large selection of original outlines and scripts from other episodes that were never produced. This entire collection of story department files originated from the production office at Desilu Studios. And at the time Desilu was shut down, the company was located on the Paramount lot, and the material was set aside to be discarded. However, at the time, Stembridge Gun Rentals was also located on the Paramount lot in a secure facility until 1979. Upon seeing that the materials were destined to be destroyed, a studio employee acquired the material and placed the collection in a gun vault at Stembridge, where it remained until 2005, when all the written works that were stored there were purchased for collection. Now, that is an incredibly fortunate and fascinating story. So, when we try to answer the question, who made the Doomsday Machine in Star Trek? At least the non-canon references offer us some alternate ideas and some intriguing theories as to its origins. However, for Star Trek canon and the real world, I'm just going to go with Norman Spinrad was the creator the original visionary behind the concept. And there you have it, Cosmic Core. We hope you have enjoyed our retrospective on who made the Doomsday Machine for Star Trek. And if you would like some additional reading material on the Doomsday Machine, I have included links in the description below for the Julian's Auction House sale if you wanted to see what script materials were auctioned off and the Star Trek Memory Beta Canon link talking about some of the theories and story ideas that have been conceived surrounding the Doomsday Machine. And recently, we started a second channel dedicated to news around science fiction we were calling the Cosmic Core Chronicle. We have changed the name to Sci-Fi and More Fun News to incorporate a little better into the Sci-Fi family. Same exact channel, different name. Thank you so much everyone for watching and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and share. Be sure to hit the bell for alerts and if you would like to support our channel further please be sure to subscribe. It's one click for you but it means the world to us. Have a great galactic day.